What is going on guys? Welcome to the first tutorial in the series that I've been waiting for so long to teach you guys. This is going to be my favorite series of all time by far because in this series we're going to be learning how to create games in Java. Now this is the reason I've been teaching you guys Java and these tutorials are going to start out um, pretty intermediate and kind of advanced. So if you don't know Java I recommend actually you need to go check out my Java tutorials it's like one through it's like an 80 part series and once you're good with that you're ready to move on to this next step how to create games in Java now what we're gonna be creating is full screen games such as like um games kinda like Super Mario Brothers and then later we're gonna be getting into 3D games and this is like first person shooters like well they aren't gonna, they aren't gonna look as cool as modern warfares and stuff but um if you you'll get the point of that how to use 3D graphics to interact with a Java 3D class and create 3D games in Java and this is gonna be awesome I'm gonna give you guys a bunch of tutorials probably over a hundred tutorials on this and by the end you're gonna be an awesome Java game developer so the first thing that we need to learn is aside from all the basics that you guys already should know is something called threads now what a thread is on your computer is it allows you to do two tasks at once so instead of having all your tasks in a row and this would be like a single line at the DMV it can go kinda of slow and to make it easier Java made something called threads what a thread would be is to take that line at the DMV and split it up into three separate lines so that you can get three things running at the same time and I said three but it's actually as many as your your computer can handle so that way your whole computer program goes faster and it can do multiple tasks at the same time so if you're saying alright I know what a thread is now it lets you do two things at once so how exactly do you create a thread well in order to create a thread the most common way or at least what we're going to be doing is you need to implement ample implements runnable and what this means this runnable interface right here it takes a method called the run and there's only one method in the runnable uh, class and this is the run method so whenever we create our thread the method run and that's what you're gonna be seeing right here uh, right here the type Apple must implement the inherited abstract method runnable run so whenever whenever you create a thread this method run is automatically gonna run so if you had something called print out hello world and you started your thread without even calling this run method it's gonna print out hello world so let's go ahead and do some stuff to our Apple class that's we're gonna we're going to be treating this as a thread class. Now let's go ahead and make a string variable called name, um, an integer variable called time, and this is going to be the length. This is going to be the name of your thread, the length of time it pauses, pretty much, and just a random r and set these equal to new random. And if you can't see be before I already imported the random class right here so we can use random numbers and this is going to be just for demonstration of the uh, threads so now let's go ahead and make a constructor public apple or whatever you name your class and for my argument I'm gonna take the name of the thread and we're gonna be naming it later on but let's go ahead and set the name equal to s and this is gonna be the parameter we passed in and let's also set that time and set this equal to r or whatever you named your random object next int and put like 999 so the time is going to be anywhere in milliseconds between pretty much zero time and one second this is milliseconds a thousand is a second but let's just go ahead and put 999 because it looks way cooler so now that we got our constructor let's go ahead and implement that run method so let's go public void run this isn't going to take any parameters and again like I said whenever we start our thread this is a code that's automatically going to run so we don't need to call this method explicitly so let's go ahead and try and let's just go ahead and catch everything get this out of the way catch if I can type right exception E and we won't handle it because we're lazy so what do we want to try to do as soon as we start our thread go ahead and system out Actually, we don't need to edit that. 
indebting is for suckers. So print f. Actually, you probably should. I just don't have enough room. Print f. Put the name of the thread, which is percent s, is sleeping for percent d, which would be the time. And let's go ahead and move to a new line. Might want to do it right there. That would probably be helpful. And just put name time make sure we don't get any errors so the first thing it's going to do is print out a little statement the name of the thread is sleeping for and give you the time well that statement's all nice and pretty but we actually need to um make good on our promise so let's go ahead and put thread which is a thread the current thread and put sleep and for our time the sleep parameter is how long do you want to sleep for so if you put this 1,000, it will sleep for one second. If you put 5,000, it will sleep for five seconds. But since we want each of these threads to sleep randomly, we're gonna go ahead and put time here. And this is gonna give us a random number, <coughs> uh, whooping cough, from zero to one second. So each of these threads, whenever we create it, it's gonna sleep randomly for zero to a second. And this is just to demonstrate a point in my next tutorial. And now after it's done sleeping, let's just put system out print f and for print f let's just go ahead and what do we want to write um let's put the name of thread s is done and for our arguments let's just put name so now what we have is pretty much a run method and actually i'm gonna um be explaining all this and finishing it up in the next tutorial so I know this doesn't look like much, but I need to teach you guys about threads because they are used a ton in games for stuff like um, if you have a lot of different things going on at once, pretty much whenever you build a huge program, you want to use threads so it can run more effectively. And in the next tutorial, I'm going to be clearing all this up for you, and we are finally getting started on game development. So thank you guys for watching. Don't forget to check out the next tutorial, and I will see you then.